Welcome to Mikon's hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you how to enable resizable bar on Intel LJ2011 version 3 or so-called x99 platform. But first I would like to thank my subscriber IC Miguel for developing all necessary drivers and writing a good guide on GitHub. I would also like to thank my other subscriber Lasse who first figured it out tested it and then informed me about this possibility. Now, what is resizable bar? Resizable bar is also called rebar, SAM or smart access memory as AMD calls it. Resizable bar on its own is a PCI Express 3.0 feature and theoretically every CPU and every motherboard that supports PCI Express 3.0 can utilize resizable bar feature. But it happened that at the beginning of the PCI Express 3.0 Live, no one used this feature, and AMD with their AM4 platform and RDNA graphics card architecture started to use the resizable bar feature first, and that's why they made up their own name, which is Smart Access Memory or SAM. Of course, after a while, Intel and Nvidia added support for a resizable bar, but the older hardware did not get any updates, and that's why we are left with these uh, sort of hacks to be able to enable a resizable bar on all the platforms. Without going into the technical details, enabling resizable bar allows your CPU to address video memory all at once. By default, the CPU must read or write video memory chunk by chunk, and this might slow down the process if your game needs to read or write lots of data from and to video memory. All in all, the performance increase depends on your hardware and the games you play, but it is a known fact that NVIDIA GPUs do not really benefit from the resizable bar, but still in some cases you can get a nice bump in performance. AMD GPUs, especially the newer ones, they do benefit from the resizable bar in certain games. Sometimes you can get no gain, sometimes you can get 1-2% of gain, and sometimes you can get up to 15% better performance in certain games. And finally, Intel Arc A750 and A770 GPUs do require resizable bar feature to be enabled, because without this feature the performance is completely pathetic. All in all, it's up to you if you want to modify your BIOS and enable a resizable bar on your x99 platform, but in my opinion, if there is a possibility to get better performance without paying for it, then why not? Before I go into the step-by-step -step instruction how to enable a resizable bar on your x99 motherboard, I have to warn you that I'm not responsible for any consequences of this guide. Modifying BIOS and flushing modifying BIOS on your motherboard may lead to a break. Even if you do everything right, something may happen, or your motherboard simply might be incompatible and then you are getting a non-working computer. Thus, I only recommend you to mess with the BIOS if you either know how to restore your motherboard functionality in case of a disaster, or this is not a mission-critical device and you will not lose any job, you will not lose any money if something goes wrong and you can peacefully wait until a flash programmer comes from AliExpress so you can restore the motherboard to its normal state. To reduce the risk of a disaster, you first need to validate that your computer can theoretically support resizable bar. And we start with a graphics card. First, you need to check your graphics card specification and see if this GPU is supporting resizable bar at all. Then you also need to validate that inside BIOS you have a feature called above 4G decoding. This feature is required for a resizable bar. And if it is not available in the BIOS, it might be in a hidden menus and then you might be able to modify the BIOS with Amip CP to enable this feature. But if above 4G decoding is not available in your motherboard BIOS at all, you will not be able to enable resizable bar. Also, your system must be installed in UEFI mode, thus means you need to disable CSM or legacy boot options. And finally, this particular guide I made for the Chinese LJ2011 version 3 x99 motherboards, but it might work with any other motherboard that supports PCI Express 3.0, as long as you have a possibility to read the BIOS, modify the BIOS and flush it back onto the motherboard after the modification. Regarding the OS compatibility, this guide requires Windows, but once everything is done, you are free to use Windows or Linux. Resizable bar feature works with both systems. 
Now let's move to the practical steps. First thing first, you would need to download required files from GitHub. Of course, the download links will be available in the video description. The first one is the rebar driver that we need to add into the BIOS. And the second one is a UEFI tool that we will use to add this driver into your BIOS. To easily read and write your motherboard BIOS, I recommend to use Mi 899 application that I have developed. Here I would like to explain that Mi 899 does not read and does not write your motherboard BIOS. It doesn't do anything with your motherboard. It only prepares you useful scripts to use FPT or AlphaWin applications depending on your motherboard, so you can execute simple scripts to read or write BIOS. And you don't need to learn all those command line arguments and you don't need to bother if you have selected wrong bias or right bias. Of course, if you don't want to use Mi 899, you can use FPT, Alpha Win, or just use an external flash programmer to read or write your BIOS. Mi 899 is just a simple tool which helps you with FPT and Alpha Win. Also, in the future, I will update X99 BIOS options with resizable bar enabled. So just take a look, maybe your motherboard already has a prepared BIOS by me in Mi 899. Finally, to modify your BIOS and enable a resizable bar, you have to do the following. First, of course, you need to dump the BIOS into a file. Then you need to open the BIOS file inside the UEFI tool application, and then you need to find a region or volume which contains the DXE drivers. There are multiple regions or multiple volumes inside the BIOS, but only one contains lots of DXE drivers. So find this region and scroll down to the very bottom, then right-click on the last entry and select Insert After. In the File Open dialog, pick up the rebar dxe.ffs driver downloaded from GitHub, and after that save your BIOS inside the UEFI tool and feel free to close the tool. The saved modified BIOS must be written onto your motherboard, and after that you need to reboot and go into the BIOS settings. Once inside the BIOS, you need to restore BIOS defaults and enter all your manual configuration that you would like to stick, for example, set up memory timings. After that, you need to find the above 4G decoding feature and enable it. And lastly, you need to make sure that CSM or legacy boot options are disabled and your system will boot in UEFI mode. With that, save the changes and reboot into Windows. Once in Windows, you need to locate the rebarstate.exe application downloaded from the GitHub link and launch it as administrator. Once prompted, you need to enter 32 and click Enter. Wait for a message saying successfully wrote rebarstate UEFI variable. If you see an error message, then something is going wrong and you need to figure out why it's not working. But if you see the success message, then everything went all right and you just need to reboot your computer and make sure that resizable bar is actually enabled. To verify your resizable bar state, we need GPU Z. Inside the GPU Z, there is a small section called the resizable bar and it will show you either enabled or disabled. If it is enabled, you can click on it and then you will see some extra details. With the resizable bar enabled, you can enjoy some extra performance. I have tested three different games using my AMD RX 6800 XT graphics card. So in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, without resizable bar, we are getting 8535 FPS. With the resizable bar enabled, we are getting 91 and 145 FPS. So the performance gain is somewhere between 8 and 10%. In Far Cry 6, we had 6588 FPS and with the resizable bar enabled, 6791 FPS. So the performance difference is just a few FPS. In Shadow of the Terminator, we had 7827 FPS and with the resizable bar enabled, we are getting 8127 FPS. So basically identical performance. As you can see, the performance gains will be different depending on your hardware and depending on the game you use. But in any case, do not forget to leave me a like, subscribe to my channel, and go to the GitHub repository of IC Miguel and give him a star for his awesome work of figuring out how to enable resizable bar on basically any platform that supports PC Express 3.0. And with this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was useful, and I hope you liked it. Bye for now.